Hey, hey, Doc Robin here with your weekly weather report. How are you? It's Tuesday, September 6th. I think everybody's back from vacay, whatever it is. Summer vacay in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, winter vacay in the Southern Hemisphere, wherever we are. Today seems to, day to be the day that everybody's getting back to work after this golden summer that we've had. So welcome back. If you are in the actualization zone with me on Facebook, great to see you. Say hello in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube or this is your first time tuning in, please say hello so I can say hello back and join us over in the actualization zone on Facebook. All you have to do is type into the search bar, the actualization zone, and we will come right up. And we'll also put the link in the show notes. So that's available to you. So today's weather report. If you're just getting to know me, you need to know that I, when I was a kid, loved weather, weather reporters, meteorologists. I loved watching the weather. I grew up in South Dakota and spent much of my, my young adulthood in Kansas and in Missouri, where there was lots of weather going on. So that's something that I've always been fascinated with. The weather report I give, of course, is more the energetics, the non-physical influences that we can anchor into that we need to be aware of this week as we go about our, our day and leading our lives and creating and contributing and mastering that which we came here to master. So that's the scoop. As always, I love to use Oracle cards just to support our message today. And today I'm using Re Rebecca Campbell's um, Work Your Light, Work Your Light Oracle. All right, so let's see what the guides have. I have been a pure channel since I was a little kid. And um, so I always tune into my guides and just basically channel what they have to say about what's going on in the world. So first one is trust your path. Trust your path this week. If you knew, if you knew that you would be supported, what would you do? If you knew that you would be supported, what would you do? I think that self-doubt is one of the greatest sabotaging mechanisms that we are working with right now. And the idea here is to not go willy-nilly into the future and not go into the future mindlessly or impulsively but to be very discerning about our paths, but to not let the discernment become like a binding agent. In other words, don't let your discernment slow you down, but discern, decide, and then go and do what my dad always says, which is make your decision the right decision. Now, I know a lot of the people who follow me have ADHD or suspect that you do. And I think that's one of the great challenges of having an ADHD brain is often we have a lot of great ideas. In fact, in fact, most people who are very bright, intuitive and have ADHD have an abundance of ideas. It's not the ideas that get us into trouble. It's the, I don't want to call it an inability, but it's definitely not a priority to discern what the best idea is. Sometimes we get caught in shiny object syndrome where we're just picking things and seeing if that works. And it sort of becomes throw spaghetti at the, the wall and see what works, which, as you know, is not a great approach to business or to life for that matter. So in this in this case, what the guides are just saying is that when you get an idea. In order to be able to figure out if it's a deep seated good idea to follow or if it's a shiny object, we need to understand that both can exist in every single idea. Because it's a polarity, shiny object, deep seated, rooted, well thought out idea. They both exist in the same space. So then it has to do with you leaning into what, what I'm gonna say feels right to you, what feels aligned to you, what not from a, an intellectual perspective, but from a soul heart-based level, what is the best way forward with this idea? Is this idea even for me? And if it is for you, then what is the best way to express this idea in 3D, in my business, in my 
in my work, in my career? What is the best way? So in order to fully express an idea that you've received, just because of how your brain is wired, it's really important to trust your path, to operate under the assumption, because you are being supported by the people around you, by your guides, by divine spirit, you are being supported. And if you can just start leaning into that and start, it's often not trusting other people or other energies or benevolent beings who are working with us. It's trusting yourself. So just lean into it and trust yourself. Trust the path that you're on. Next card for this week is going to be this one right here. And it is called Imrama. Imrama. That's this little card right here. And the question that's being asked from this card is, what are you being called to journey to? You are not here without a destination. You are not here just to take up space. You are not here to just get through your life. You are called here. You agreed to come here. But sometimes just in the process of living life, we forget what we were called for and we forget what we were called to. So this is a really good week to really get dialed in, tuned in to what am I being called to journey to? What's my destination? Now we know that the destination is, it's said to be less important than the journey. But I think in this case, what's coming through is that you have to anchor into something. It's just like, GPS with your phone. You know, you, when you're getting ready to go someplace, you type in the address into your maps on your on the app on your phone. You'd have to know the address so that the directions can tell you how to navigate there. And so too is the case with your life. If you don't have a vision, if you don't know where you're going, you're going to be wandering around lost in the desert. And who wants that? So being with the question of what am I being called to journey to this week is, I think, an imperative just in terms of where we're headed, what I'm being shown in the next three to four months as we're closing out 2022 and moving into the next year, into the next cycle, is really anchoring into I'm being called to something bigger than myself. I am being called to something more creative than what I've experienced before. I'm being called to my highest timeline. This is what I am being called to. I'm being called to step out of the old way of doing things and to create something new. These are some of the ways that you can think about this question of what am I being called to journey to? Then, I love this card. It's been coming up a lot to dance with life. And the message here is to do something to change your energy. You have heard me say, and I'm sure you've heard other experts say that doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. Well, that even goes for, I don't even think that it's crazy to do the same thing over and over again, but we do get into these routines that keep us in the same patterns. So what this card is actually calling for is a pattern interrupt. Do something different. Get out of, out of bed on the other side of the bed. Have a glass of water before you have your coffee. Do a little dance in the morning. Do something to shake up your energy so that you can dance with life in a new way. Because if you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, it creates boredom, it creates stagnation. It creates the, the deep seated and deep rooted patterns in the brain that you just get into a response set. Then I do this, then I do this, then I do this. And it creates an ordinary world for you. Well, you're not here to li live an ordinary life. You're here to create an extraordinary experience while you're here to contribute, to master, and to create. And the way to do that is to shake things up in your everyday life. Okay, so find some things to do that are different this week. And make a promise to yourself that you will do them. It gets easy to just go into the routine. It gets easy to do just the same thing over and over and over again. 
But when you do a pattern disrupt, you can expect some new ideas, some new energies, some new insights to come in very, very quickly. Last one, last card for this week. Oof, oof. Big question, what are you clinging to? Speaking of create, creating the same thing over and over again, what are you clinging to? I wish I remember who wrote this, but I saw it on a meme somewhere. It said, anything that I've let go of has claw marks on it. So when we examine what you're, we're clinging to, when each of us takes a look at and gets really honest with yourself, what am I clinging to? What am I unwilling to let go of? What am I wanting to remain the same because it's comfortable? I also saw somebody say recently that comfort is actually the worst thing in the world. It's not fear, it's comfort. Because when you get comfortable, it keeps you in stag stagnation. It keeps you doing the same thing over and over. So make yourself a little uncomfortable this week. Let go of something that maybe you're cling clinging to. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's the hope that a relationship will resolve itself or it will turn around. Maybe it's a past memory, a past experience that just keeps coming up over and over and over again. All of those things are waiting to be released back into the heart of God. And when you release anything that you're clinging to back into the heart of God, who better to take care of that than God? And then that frees you up to usher in something new into your life. So that's all I have for you today. It's been a joy to be here with you. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you would leave a comment and tell me the number one thing you appreciate about it. You could take a screenshot tag me in social media and let me know and share it with your friends if you think that there's somebody who might appreciate and benefit from hearing these messages. Until next week, I will see you in the actualization zone. See you later.